We are live, guys. Welcome to episode 19 of The Weekly. And my lower third isn't showing up, so I am brandishing my self-written... Leroy Jenkins! And that's Mr. Warren Bowman. All right, guys, thank you for joining us again on The Weekly. As always, our guests... So that's a guest, sorry, host, I apologize. <laughs> yeah, well, we were gonna have a guest, and then he was like, "Oh no, I'm so, I'm too busy. I can't show up for you." Yes, show. yes, our, our our guests couldn't show up. Call you out, Ryan. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Juan Wagner, how's it going, man? For pocket now. It's going well. Oh, now he's just rubbing it in. I love it. I know, right? Yes, yes. And Warren Bowman has his lower third back. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with you guys and not being able to do lower thirds. I just yeah, don't get. I, oh, I can get both lower thirds. I got all kinds of lower thirds right now. And and I'm right all here kinds. with my with my signage right here with the signage. <laughs> hey, hey, I was about to do that this week. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's let's kick things off. Um, I don't think we have a uselessness of the week, uh, per se, but we do have a few interesting topics. So let's start off with uh, one plus. OnePlus announced this week that, yeah, there will be no uh, invites for OnePlus 3. They will have, I believe we talked about this on the uh, Puck Now Weekly. Mm -hmm. um, they also will have roughly around a million units. Not sure whether it's already available, produced, but at least for a certain time period, they should have a million units available. Um, so I'm going to kick it off with you, Warren, because we've already talked about this, and uh, we'll, we'll jump back in. Uh, thoughts on that, on OnePlus 3, you know, not having invites and you being able to go out there and buy first-come, first-served basis? Well, who cares about that when apparently they're going to be releasing a thousand of these devices before the specs are even out yet, and you, you get to buy it without anybody knowing about it. Once um, again, they pooch it. No, see, I, to me, that's not too bad, though. That's that's like for hardcore fans. Like, if you're really... I mean, only a hardcore fan will buy that, do it that way. I mean, that's... No, it's still annoying. It's still annoying. It's annoying. Like, why do you need to... We're going to release a 1,000 units out, but the thing is that you can't know anything about the stuff that you're buying. We're just going to put it out there. For no, no, not even to know about it. The price. There's no price. You know that, right? Yeah, they don't know a price. So you're just, you're just going to charge your card some random number and say, like, hey, here's your device. Thanks for the 1,000 bucks. Like, like, <laughs> like it would be a thousand, and just it's one plus. Uh, yeah, I think will, I think the internet will rage if a one plus sells for more than four hundred. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, um, no, I mean, I'm I'm I'm, I'm 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 kind of okay with that, just because it's for the hardcore fans. Whoever will buy that, it's a hardcore fan. Where are these hardcore fans at? Uh, I mean, the people who everybody who waited for invites, man. So they have a fa they have a fan base. The thing is whether they can now actually branch out of that that fan base. You know, if they can actually meet consumers. Um, I, I really wanted um, Ryan to jump at this topic because I mentioned I I posted that OnePlus, um, you know, didn't have invites anymore, and pretty much he said f you to OnePlus. That was his. That's the abbreviation of what he said. <laughs> so. <laughs> but I mean, it seems like it seems like we've all kind of come to this very meh uh, attitude towards OnePlus, especially in the third year, where we should be all excited and saying, yeah. "Okay, this is when you know they can take charge." Them seriously. Yeah, yeah. And now we're like, huh? <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a little sad, but you know, it is it is what it is. I guess till um, we see the device on the fourteenth, right? Yes, I believe June fourteenth is June fourteenth. Uh, yeah, well, and and we're we're there are speculations that it'll be unveiled the fourteenth and be available to sell probably the day after. So that could be interesting too. Okay, mm -hmm. oh, that's cool. All right, moving on. Um, since OnePlus wasn't such a huge topic opener, I apologize for starting us really soft. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Google has talked about having more control on the Nexus devices. Again, we talked about this on the Pocket Now Weekly, and uh, you know this is one I wanted to um, you know uh, ask you, Warren, since now you are a Nexus you know enthusiast in a way, in a sense. Uh, what do you think about Google having more control in the, whether it's the design process or the development of the Nexus devices? Didn't they have this already? I, I, you would think so, but I guess there's some more control that they want. Um, 
It's interesting. I mean, it, I, I, I guess the, the most interesting thing I heard out of that was when they were talking about the uh, uh, Nexus-only style features, that that will come to, to, to Nexus-specific devices. So that, that interests me, but it, it, I mean, if it gives them greater control to do more things with it, then I suppose, you know, go, go, go for it if, if, if that's the case. But I, I don't know what they didn't have control over before to say, you know, yay or nay to that, I guess. Mm. Um, Juan, anything you want to add? Yeah, I, I mean, like, uh, so this has all been sort of hailed as a good move on Google's part. We've been talking about whether or not Google might eventually just sort of start making their own hardware, buy out another company like they did Motorola. Uh, I would be kind of like to, you know, follow up on what Warren said, I would be kind of curious, like, what was the relationship beforehand? You know, was this a situation where Google would just say, hey, it needs to have these specs and you can kind of then do whatever else you want? I mean, yeah. we ended up with quite a disparity in 2015 between the plastic build of the LG Nexus versus the metal build of the Huawei Nexus. You know, and I'm sure there were price point considerations that needed to be met in both cases, but you know, they don't look like siblings. You know, they don't look like Google phones. They look like a Huawei, and they look like an LG. So, uh, you know, moving to this relationship with HTC building a Nexus, and there's still these weird rumors floating around that Huawei might still be involved with the Nexus program in some way, although I don't know that I've gotten any kind of word that makes me think that that's super likely. Mm -hmm. um, mm. it, would, it would be interesting to see if Google starts dictating a stricter design influence so that maybe a Nexus starts resembling something specific as opposed to whatever manufacturer... Spin, so spin, they want to yeah. put on the aesthetics. Yeah, that that might be the case, and uh, I'm interested to see what those Nexus only features are because, you, for me, there's a reason why I don't like stock Android because it doesn't have features. Um, it doesn't doesn't add more than just being me able to swipe left and right and open my application. So I want to see them do more with that. Maybe that will well, help, you know. well, to to, uh, to to argue that point a little bit, it's it's been, uh, you know, since they've been going on Android 5.1 and uh, 6.0, there has been a less of a need really for these uh, extra features and stuff to come on the devices that have been more so getting in the way of Android versus um, versus really actually added benefit. Most people's complaints were mostly on split screening and being able to Exactly. See, yeah. two, two, oh no, no, no. I, I, I agree, but that took forever. So I'm not. I'm not actually. I'm but I also don't think. Now. I also don't think that was necessarily the 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 diehard feature everybody needed. To me, the biggest feature was them actually making Android a suitable operating system that didn't need to have extras added to it, and that really didn't start happening until we got to Android 5.1. I, I agree, but I still I still hold them for all of that because they took forever. I'm just I'm well, sorry. I, 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 how can you hold them to something that they might not even have had a patent on to be able to put inside? They might have just gotten the negotiation deal to just get with I mean, I, I, to be able to have that feature. The thing is that we don't know why, but what I'm saying is, is that when you, when the company who's leading your market has split screen and users are using it, you need to have, you need to you need to start working on a way not take that long. Well, I agree. That, that, many things. that Android that, that the Android team has been very conservative with feature updates for a while now. I, w I would say like the biggest changes that we've seen in Android consumer facing. Obviously, a lot has yeah. been changing in the background. Yeah. But it has been aesthetics. You know when. When Android 4 came out, Ice Cream Sandwich, it was a big push towards making Android more attractive. Um, at the same time, that's when we had all of those crazy petitions for things like better USB audio services. Well, we didn't get that until later on in Lollipop. So with a couple years of Android, and I would say it still needs to be kind of cleaned up a little bit. Even though this is running on Linux, you would think that we would have better USB audio support for Android devices. So... You know, whether or not there might have been some kind of negotiation or patent issue or IP, mm -hmm. I still feel that Google probably could have been more aggressive on implementing some of these things that LG and uh, I think Lenovo has had split screening or multi-window apps on some of their tablets. Uh, Samsung obviously blazed the trail on the note. If there was really some sort of lock on IP, I, I feel it would have manifested itself sooner than now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we, we've had yeah, this notion I, of operating with Windows for a while. Um, whatever policy, I mean, like, I, I wouldn't think that Apple would walk into this space if there were going to be any potential, you know, lawsuits or uh, intellectual property issues with having two apps on screen at the same time. Um, no, also, says... We also got to remember that 
those those split that split screen service didn't work necessarily with every single app. That actually worked. Oh, it a still lot does. Sometimes, yeah, with, with, with specific apps. Android, if they have to implement that, that essentially kind of has to work with every single app that comes out, and everybody's got to be offered that. So that's a probably a little bit more of a daunting task to put inside your operating system than Samsung and LG. They can just sit there and simply say, we can do these apps. We'll do some of these common ones over here. We'll release an API, and hopefully maybe some developers will take advantage of it. And, but it's it's, it's okay. still too too long. I, I mean, yes, it may, but it, again, it's being maybe it'll do it. It, 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 it is big because you got to remember it's it's a handful of apps versus a million apps. It's got to try and do that and try and give developers an access. It, it, to, that. to me, that's, to that's me, it's just it's it's a feature that just should have been there. It's, it, well, it and, just should have. And, and again, I, I, I should have versus. How hard was it to implement? You can say something should have no, no, okay, been no, no, but see, the thing is, the thing is, no, the thing is, Warren, you're arguing on the hypothetical that we don't know is even true. I'm arguing on the fact that it should have happened. I agree with you in the fact that that, that might be possible, but we don't even know that was even the case. What I, Google was just like, no, we're taking a slow process and we want to do this. Well, we're also, but, 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 we're also talking about a power feature that, that I guarantee you most people that have Samsung phones don't even know do. Oh, 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 how about this? How about this? Uh, power saver. That was another one that took forever. Yeah, I was, was, was going to bring that up. I, I think I think what we're what we're looking at. Well, guys, but power I mean, saver versus those, those is an actual feature. Issues. Power saver is just is, is just all of them bullshitting and just basically stripping the phone of all of its power. I mean, it didn't feature. matter, but it was it was needed at the time, and it and sucked. Android. And it, it mostly was, sucked. It still, it still, <laughs> it mostly still, sucked. It was no. It was a feature needed, especially until we finally got to bigger batteries that can last us to 24 hours, which is literally only last year. That would literally use the time we got to to batteries that would last us 24 hours, unless you were carrying a big phone that had a massive battery. It was only last year that we got batteries that would last us that long. But, but guys, so, I think I think what we're overlooking here is the culture shift at Google. So prior to Lollipop. It wasn't on Google to make a nice device. Yeah, they didn't want to. They didn't want to step on manufacturer partners' toes. And now we're looking at a Google that is very much in danger, or is is pretty much already ceded the mindshare of Android to Samsung. So if more of their partners are going to be competitive, you know, if if a new manufacturer wants to step in the space or Blue wants to step into the space and be more competitive against a Samsung. Can they marshal together the resources to develop as much custom code as Samsung? No. no. Same thing with an HTC in this day and age. Really can't marshal up as much developer talent to fight Samsung one to one. And we've definitely seen a couple of gaps in LG's armor when it comes to you know developing new services that are going to be consumer facing and appealing. And so now I think we see a Google over the last I would say the last two updates that is focused on not only making a UI that's as attractive as it can be without needing skins and also starting to implement features directly. And I think that's in direct response to how lopsided this conversation is with Samsung and then everyone else. Uh, we have a few comments here. Um, this is from, uh, let's see, who's the first one here? Sorry. Uh, first person here is, this is from All Nighter Pro Tech. OnePlus learned their lesson. They must have watched previous episodes of the weekly. <laughs> and I we think, still didn't get that damn consulting fee. No, I think he says I think it would be around 450. Um, um, Hankoy Martin says I hope uh, they will blow us away with 300 dollars for four gigabytes and 400 dollars for six gigabytes. I think I think a 400 dollar price point is probably the lowest we'll see. Uh, he also says the price point is your main weapon. Um, and then uh, all night process. I don't that, think that, that weapon doesn't work as well when you have companies like Blue and them just shooting them all around, pretty much putting out things like the Vivo Five that really come. Oh yeah, well, and and I mean like in all of the comments on our videos right now, everyone's talking Axon Seven for the yeah. sort of the the super the super Android geeks saying like you know bang for buck that's going to be one of the hottest phones. So once again, yeah. Um, and then what else do we have here? I don't think it will make that much of a difference unless they start making Nexus devices themselves without a manufacturer. This is all Nighter Pro Tech talking about, uh, you know, Google and the Nexus. Google may want to start standardizing Nexus devices so they are more recognizable like iPhones. That's that's most likely... They have iPhone. that already. That's called the Samsung brand. Let Samsung do that. They need to come out with something unique each time. I don't want oh. them to sit there and come out with clones of the same thing over and over again. Yeah, I mean it's that's that's we already have enough of that. 
who knows what Google wants to do, but they want to have more control uh, on their devices. Speaking of new devices, Samsung um, uh, announced two devices on Thursday, uh, the Gear Fit 2 and the Icon X. Uh, somebody pronounced it slightly differently at the press event. I just yeah. called it. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> pronounced the Icon X. Iconics or something like that. I, yeah, somebody's pronounced it like that. Like, it's, it's, it's a yeah. horrible name for that. It's uh, the Iconics. <laughs> so, so the Gear Fit 2 is the new fitness yeah. band. Um, it's got all day tracking. Oh, sorry, no, just sorry. Um, all day tracking. Not, well, I just might say all day tracking. So it's got a, a heart rate sensor that's, uh, that does continuous tracking. Sorry, I said all day tracking. Um, you know, it looks like a, a nice, simple update from the previous version. It's priced at 179. Uh, I don't know if anybody has images because I can't. Sh I still can't share anything uh, on my screen. Um, and uh, the Icon X is a little bit more intriguing. Now, Sam has a, a pair of head uh, earbuds that are exactly like that that he picked up at, at Kickstarter. I forgot the name of the company, uh, which are. Uh, basically, they are separate earbuds that you can actually uh, wireless put into each ear. They have heart rate tracking for you. Uh, the battery life lasts for about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, they're meant to be you pick up and you go. You know, very, very runner-based type um, earbuds where they've got four gigs of storage, so you can actually store your music directly on there, and you don't need anything else to actually, um, you know connect to for you to actually listen to music and and uh, do your fitness tracking and things like that. So that was the more exciting device. Um, bing, bada, boom, sharing the screen. There we go. So that is the um, uh, Gear Fit 2. Um, and then right beside it there is the Icon X. Do you have a, do you have a better image of the Icon X by any chance? Uh, let me check. Hold on. All right. I'll go out of your screen so we don't see what's on your desktop. <laughs> <laughs> so, any thoughts on this on these two devices? Uh, while while uh, Warren is looking at this, uh, well, one, I, I am I am actually kind of happy to see Samsung continuing with the gear line. I, I kind of feel we need some nope, kind no of competition right in order to pick up uh, what's going on with Apple Watch versus Android Wear because I just don't feel like those have really huh. nailed compelling market chunks for things like smartwatches. Now, I, I still eventually hope that when we see things like the Iconics, Iconics, Icon, Iconics... First name ever. Um, one of the things that I actually kind of hope that we see with more discrete audio solutions like that is better implementation with services on your phone. I, I, I think, you know, if you had an inner oral ear wig that could very easily, you know, uh, be used to transcribe messages, uh, voice commands, communication. Oh, there, there, is no, there is no mic on the iPhone. No, 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 that's what I mean, though. It's like, we kind of need to do just the audio no, it, version. It, it, has, it has a mic. No, no, they said there was no mic, so that you basically it's fully sweatproof, so nothing, because it goes right in, man. Like, it's... Apparently, they, they, they said there's something. Unless, said there was unless, a mic. unless the person said something else entirely. Hey, they said there was a mic. messages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they didn't really focus on that that that, that as much because that's not yeah, really available. Yeah, coming out way. in September, so maybe yeah. it will change. At least at that point. But, yeah. but I mean, this is sort of the first step, you know, just yeah. like when we had wireless headphones and then people started adding microphones to like high-end headphones for phone calling. Um, you know, sort of building out more robust solutions like this, actually, I think is is a is a brilliant move to take us away from needing to interact with screens for every interaction. Um, mm -hmm. If that screen is on your phone, if that screen is in your car, if that screen is on your wrist, we're really hung up on visuals right now, and I think getting back to audio is going to be a really important move in the near term. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I think I think it will help. Those are the kind of things that you know we're looking for in that next step where. Um, you know, like you said, you have that. Once you have that and it's tucked in, uh, you're pretty much, you know, you know, Secret Service style. You know, yeah. you got to hold on. You know, it, it, it reminded me of um, a video I saw on Facebook of a guy who developed an app that can live transcribe. Um, Wave his, labs. Um, yeah, his. Um, the Wave the Labs. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, languages. So he was speaking to a girl. It looks very much first, like this. Yeah, and he was just talking, and it was live transcribing you know, for him. So that's the kind of thing where it becomes Star Trek. You know, you have yeah. The, well, I was gonna say uh, that's that's straight out of uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That's, so yeah, it's the Babblefish, and uh, that would be pretty rad. And and I even just mean for for silly things like once we kind of have better Google assistance and a Siri that's actually usable. Um, we keep moving in these weird like let's follow science fiction to a movie like her. 
where you can have sort of in your whole computer conversations with your phone in very organic ways to deliver services in a way that I don't need to have my full my field of view occupied by a glowing rectangle. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely agree. I think I think going to that future requires a couple of things where um, you know everything will be server based most likely, and mm-hmm. also um, companies need to forget about data plans because come on. It's not going to be necessary. <laughs> You're going to be pushing a lot of data when you're asking. You're constantly conversing with your computer, you know, for everything that you need. So, uh, anyway, or, moving or on. We just need to have better compression, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. The nice, thing, the nice thing about audio over trying to keep a screen powered is we can serve audio pretty space efficiently. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Now it it's it definitely we can get to that point. Video's coming. We we got H.265 taking its way. Which should really help in cutting down the number of uh, cutting down the size of files, especially on the 4K side of things. Yeah. All right. Moving on to uh, an interesting topic. Uh, the CEO of Nest <laughs> left. Um, now, the question I was going to ask is: Is this an indication of where Nest has gone, which is why he's leaving <laughs> at this point in time? Especially you mean the terrible, terrible company that is Nest. That I have he... one of their products and I hate it. That yeah, company, Nest? Um, I mean, Nest has had a, a lot of problems. Nest, <laughs> Nest is one of the companies that spearheaded the the revolution for the thermostat, right? The the yeah. new uh, connected thermostat that couldn't connect to anything, didn't work too well. And then you know you have companies like Ecobee that uh, Warren and I use, who just absolutely kill it and it works. Yeah. And you know is, has got some great integration with other you know different devices, and then also the fact that Nest hasn't actually released new products that have have kind of like galvanized that IoT space. You know we've seen mm-hmm. it from other people rather than them. Um, it said now so the article uh, basically says that he's left, but you know I, I'm thinking he was kind of told you know dude. It's not really working too well. I mean, you can still have your op- stock options or whatever the case may be, but you might want to. Yeah. <laughs> might want to just. Might want to see you taking a step back away from the company you started. So you know, any any thoughts on that, Al Juan? Since you're a net, you're a Nest user. I I mean like. Oh, it, former I user. Don't know. Oh, current user. Uh, current user. I still have <laughs> that that Nexus uh, the the Nest webcam up. I I just. So when we start moving people and personnel and. CEOs around these various companies. It, like, does it even matter? The, the the division's underperforming. Google hasn't really done anything to motivate something exciting from this brand. This is a brand that shook up home automation, started us a lot of consumers off on a conversation of Internet of Things and remote control of, of, of home uh, appliances and stuff. And what have they done? What what has happened since this acquisition? If, if anything, when you read through people that have experiences with this company, it's that customer support has been terrible. Apps are not really well implemented or buggy or still require sort of software fa- uh, fixes or patches. Uh, these services aren't running well. And then some of the things that people were really enjoying from this company will just get axed. And then all of the server support dies. So where's the trust in investing in this brand? Mm-hmm. So... Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I can't, not only can I not be motivated to feel much for this move that this guy's leaving, he's also going to be walking away with some really great perks, benefits, packages, cash, whatever. I, you know, kudos for him. He did dick with this company under Google and now he gets to benefit from it and go, what, race electric cars or something like that? (laughs) Isn't that one of his side projects where he's working on like go-kart motors or something? Yeah. Neat. Great. Juan. Okay. Hater uh, of Nest. Juan. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I mean, like, this this whole, like, kind of corporate culture surrounding these types of companies. You know, you have a hot idea solely so that you hope that it gets bought out by Google, and then what do consumers get? You know, like, I'm kind of tired of that. I, I'm, I'm wanting to support actual upstarts that are trying to do cool stuff as opposed to, man, I hope this company gets bought out by Google because then they'll have infrastructure. That's not the case. We're not seeing that anymore. We're seeing large companies swallow up these smaller sort of hot, exciting indie properties, and then we don't really get cool stuff from it. So that's not fun to talk about anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty much. Um, Nest is Nest. I mean... 
I think I remember. I think I remember. Uh, well, I think I was with you when we first saw them, and they were just a small company at a booth at Pepcom. Mm-hmm. At uh, at um, I, don't I remember that Pepcom. It, at Pepcom, and I think I remember saying to E, and I was just like, "That's very first generation. I would not touch that right now. We have to wait to see what everyone else does, because no one else had anything like that, and it wasn't any like real competition at that point." In time, and I'm like, I usually like, well, let's wait to see what competitors come out first, because then we can kind of see where 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 this is gonna go. But I, I swear, by the time we got out of that Pepcom, the next thing I knew, they got bought by Google, and now it 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 it, it was it was just a, a weird thing. I, I I don't know. It's just something I didn't really trust that the product worked away. The kind of from jump. Not saying not 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 saying I ever used it. I I didn't use an S myself, but it, I kind of had that vibe that. This was something that, in the beginning of Internet of Things, that was very early and was very kind of on a, on a beta level, and I think we needed to wait a little bit longer to see what was coming out. And Nest was sort of the beginning of that, but unfortunately for the people that invested in Nest, they got caught into this thing of just basically buying a perpetual beta product and never really Well, getting... you get that when you get into Google. Google is a beta company, man. Well, professionals are beta. Gmail, well, right? But I mean, like, been out of beta for long when... Google Maps has been out of beta long enough. No, no, no. But they were beta but for to, quite a long time. Too. But to yeah, Warren's yeah. point, when when you get swallowed up by Google, you're supposed to have resources. <laughs> yeah, so a just... Google beta doesn't feel like most other companies' betas, right? You a know? Google beta is like a finished product that they're just continuing for most to other companies. On. And, <laughs> and so, but, by comparison, a lot of Nest stuff still feels like Google alphas. So. I mean, I mean, yes. I, I think the problem with Nest. I mean, I don't know who or what, but the problem with Nest also sounds like the problem uh, Google had with Motorola, where one one of the two heads in Google just didn't like Motorola and refused to allow Motorola get updates for Android. That is probably what happened with this company, where you they were sucked in, one of the two people was like, I don't like this buy, and fuck it, I'm not going to work with them, and we're not going to be doing resources, because Nest shouldn't be where they are, because they had a product that, yeah, it was early, but... Doesn't mean should've worked. Yeah, it should have. I mean, we have Ecobee, who is much smaller Canadian company. Cust- their customer service is it is weirdly fantastic. When you call, somebody picks up the phone immediately, like you call. I'm calling Juan on the phone. That that's how quick it is. And you're like, he- like hello, hey. like hi. I'm like, uh, you're human. Okay, I'm um, sorry. I mean, um, contrast <laughs> that with the two weeks it took me to actually get someone from Nest to try and sort out some of the problems that I was having. Yeah, before. but that but that's but I had solved. Ten days before they contacted. But, but to me, that's Google because Google has no customer service. You can't necessarily all these companies, Google, Facebook, and the rest of them. They are very bad at customer service. You can't call. Hey. It, 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 for them, it, it all depends upon if they created the product themselves for customer service and support. If it's something that they did and they're making and they originated, the customer service is actually pretty on point. It's when they buy other people's stuff. And, yeah, and, no, I mean, and, I, no, I, I wouldn't say though. Gmail does not have direct phone support that easy. What the hell do you need phone support? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just no, no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying it does not. It doesn't matter whether you. But that's but that's a bad example of something that needs. But, phone but that support. is the, that is the long one of their longest products. I'm just yeah, but that's a bad yeah, and they won without having to have yeah, any I mean, phone uh, support. Or, or, or YouTube, yeah, yeah. Try and call somebody on YouTube. We are on YouTube. We are here. Yeah, but that's a, on that, that, that's once again. That, a but that, 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 no, 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 that's that is the same. same. That's not a cons- consumer's not gonna go and call YouTube to say no, that my YouTube is broken. Forget consumers. I'm talking about us. Us. Yeah, yeah, we can't us. even call them. You guys are listening. We cannot call we Google call them. on there YouTube. A, there's easily. a number. You, you have to have a certain. You have to be at a certain point. But yes, it it it's like See, for if you're I trying mean, to start it, off the basic. But that's not a good well, example. To be comparing fair, this YouTube to other thing else. All posts on us for what that point is. Point is, yeah, the point, point keeps changing left and right. I mean, no, no, I'm sorry. The <laughs> yeah, point <laughs> Google has a little while. Has a two, bad customer and, service and, record. And, 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 yeah, but you, 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 you're, and you're comparing. I'm not comparing. That, I mean, if I want to compare, that. I'll add Microsoft to it, right? But Microsoft, at least you can call and you get a process to get to someone, at least. And pay at, out of the ass to get any actually pro- proper support out of I them. I still get somebody. I can get a human being. I can't get from Google. So yeah, yeah but like you, I'm saying, yeah, that but, this yeah, is, but your arguments on the, but the my Gmail argument and stuff like that, that is bad. bad. Well, look, missing, I'm talking about Google Warren, services. Warren, like, you're missing no, no, my I'm argument. Not, I, no, my argument is your argument's invalid. That's why. Oh no. 
your argument, look, my argument is that you bought a company in beta and added it to a company that has poor customer service and a track record on it. You're, it's a recipe for disaster. Okay, what other Google services do you actually use? YouTube, I can't talk to anyone. Gmail, I can't talk to anyone. So that's that, there you but, go. But, that, but that's not services that need actual support within. Trust me, everybody, does anybody else have that where you can actually talk to someone? Does anybody else in that space have that same type of customer service? That would you can go and talk to someone else? No. Have you have you called, contacted them through the Google Store? Have you contacted them through Google Play Music? Have you used something like Project Five that actually needs to involve customer service? I've used, I've used and part- I've used all those, and the customer service is actually very good. Well, the ones I use the customer service are sucky. So as far as I'm concerned, it's not across the board. And maybe yeah, that's you, the way but, it is. But you can't compare one thing that. I mean, Doesn't I can't compare, the same level compare of Project Five to that it either. Does. So what I'm saying is, again, when the company was bought was when Google also had bad customer service, and that probably transpired mixing with the fact that maybe but one of the CEOs didn't, just didn't like the company, which but happened you also had a quite time, well. But you also have to remember, customer service comes when you're paying into the product. If you're not paying into the product. Yeah, you're not going to get that, that customer a lot of Google service. services. That's the same the product, thing. Right. Amazon has amazing customer service, but that's because you pay into it. That's because you, you're buying something, or you're using one of their. Like, like, trust me, if you get an AWS and you need you need more support than what you can find online. Oh, you're gonna be paying out the ass for that. Trust me, I've seen the price. I mean, technically, no, 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 technically, I'm paying for it anyway. You're making mo- add money off me in the first place. Yeah, I am actually the person who's making money for you. Let's just be practical about it. Second, also, you're making add money off me too by selling my analytics on Gmail. So yes, I'm a paying customer. Give me service. I mean, you can. They do give you service. Obviously, you can calculate all your way you want. I'm saying Google as a company has not learned a good job yet of doing proper customer service, which is why, at least on the Nexus program, you have OEMs that are making Nexus devices for them because you can call Huawei, you call HTC, you can call anybody else and say, please, this phone is faulty. That's the benefit you have in those areas. I'm just saying that where Nest landed is that they landed in a position where they got into the company at the time where you had one of Google CEOs was always having it, uh, one of the founders, sorry, was always having an issue with a company here and there. He was clearly with Mo- Motorola. You saw that happen. And you see what happened to Motorola where they were not getting updates at the same time. They were not actually talking to the, the Android team. It was weird. So I'm not surprised but why. They the company for patents and then realized they didn't have any. But, I mean, but just even dealing internally, you should be doing, doing a better job at it. So you know, it, maybe that's maybe it's, that's the benefit of having Alphabet now, where you can now break things out, and you know, you have a better control rather than everything being on the Google. But anyway, this next discussion should have not gone this long. <laughs> <laughs> should, should should not have. Should uh, not two have. words, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there, there was a there's a bunch of conversations here, people, about Android One devices. I, I That's still it. a thing. Yeah. So, so, well, uh, it started I, off, and it's something that we've talked about on the show before. Like, I, I think if we're looking at some of the security issues facing the Android platform, I agree with a lot of the people in the, in the comments here. If, if we're going to continue supporting the devices and we don't want them to be like zombie Windows XP boxes, it would be really helpful if we could come up with a standard where once your phone is passed any kind of manufacturer support, that we can easily get some kind of Android 1 version on that phone so that yeah. you can still receive security bug fixes and you're never going to get new features but some kind of post manufacturer support um, there was a there was one of the comments I, I can't find it now or just way too many here yeah me too um, <laughs> I was looking for one where somebody had mentioned Android 1 in India hasn't done any updates almost in a year I think and also the fact that um, the basis of Android One was to to, de- to make sure that you know all features go across the board, but all the new features for yeah, like, I mean every time we, we hear like updates on Android, that that was the comment I was trying to find. I do apologize for whoever said it in in the comments, and now I can't find it. Um, I think it might have been Vicente, but um, the this notion that oh we're making the code base more efficient and you know that'll help lower end devices, and now here's a holography demonstration that that will only work on a future processor that hasn't been released yet. And you're like, well, you can't have it both ways. Are we making yeah. these things more accessible, or are we focusing on the masturbatory high end of the smartphone market? Very true. Mm-hmm. All right, moving on. Um, yeah, Sony, um, this is on the game side of things. Sony will trade you sweet PS4, your PS4 game clips for swag, which is a nice incentive. So Sony is trying to... Um, 
increase its social element on the PlayStation 4, and any game clips that you uh, you share, uh, you could get you know different things you know from like points, uh, DualShock controller, prizes monthly, um, just you know thoughts on you know the fact that Sony is a market leader now in console space uh, has been anyway since this generation launch, um, and Sony doing this. Um, how do you think it will it will fare? Do you think it'll be something a lot of people will jump in, or it's one of those things you're like, I don't think I'm gonna win, so what's the point? You know, type of thing. Who knows? Yeah. I think I think it surges. I mean, anytime you do something like this, I think you're gonna see the community embrace it near term. Yeah. And then I think it'll just become a playground for the ultra hardcore dedicated gamers. You know, everything kind of goes in that cycle anyway. So I mean, it's cool that Sony's thrown out some of uh, some of the stuff, and I think a lot of people are gonna have fun trying to grab it. And then once it'll probably just fizzle I, after a point this when this is the, for them to get more engagement within their platform. That's kind of what it is. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 no. I mean, that's totally but, what it is. But because the difference between them and the Xbox community is like maybe the Xbox community is smaller, but they're far more engaged in the in the platform and communication with each other. On on unlike on the PS4 side of things, which I think they have that, but it's just not on the same level. You know, it's it's it 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 it's it, it's them trying to get just 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 get things you know vibed up and going. They don't they don't have a major Nelson to keep them amped up yet. So they need something to keep the community going. I don't know who the community leader is for PlayStation. They're like the guy that everybody can point to for news and no, this is not that. there's no. none, and that's the advantage of Microsoft. Microsoft Xbox Live essentially well, from the beginning from the get go was built about, it was, was basically marketed and, and, and pushed by one guy in Major Nelson, and he's been the figurehead of that throughout, and people stick to that, and that's, I think that's a good way to keep the community engaged, and I think that's what this whole thing is about, but they don't need, need, need to realize they need somebody out there, they should get, why don't they just go get Kevin? <laughs> Kevin the president? <laughs> Kevin, and just have him, have him be the, the spokesperson for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely agree with you guys. I think that's where they need to lean things to. But you know, it's a nice incentive. Hopefully, they can at least spice it up so they can last for a year in terms of this general consumer mindset. And then it's going to go into that you know hardcore gamer format at, at some point. That's definitely yeah. necessary. Uh, it's definitely going to happen. Um, any more news topics uh, we have uh, before we go to our discussion point that I, I dropped off, which isn't really tech. It's more entertainment and more. <laughs> uh, more PC police. Uh, I wanted to make it. I wanted to make it useless, but I figured I would make it a discussion point just because it's. Well, let's let's things. jump into that because you yeah. know we we didn't really have a proper uselessness, and I, I I think uh, you know Nest actually turned out to be a pretty good quasi useless. Quite, yeah. so let's <laughs> let's see how much more sour we can get on something. Okay, so um, if you haven't noticed, and I, I will put a link for you out there. Uh, also, uh, X Men, uh, X Men Apocalypse oh, movie. This. Yes, X Men Apocalypse the movie had a. If I can find the image, uh, probably the most misogynistic movie poster ever made in the history of misogyny. Yes, yes. Um. So the, the no no it was a billboard. If you, if you, Warren, if you can show that, please do that. It was a billboard showing Apocalypse, choking Mystique. Now, um, you know, from from the film, from the film is actually. The trailer. Yeah, from the, yeah, it's, the it's, damn, every damn trailer. It's, the it's a scene in the movie here. Now, um, a lady uh, or actress, Rose McGowan, who, uh, well, we can term her as a feminist or at least, you know, in that mindset, um, she said a couple of things. She said, there is a major problem when men and women at 20th Century Fox think casual violence against women is the way to market a film. This is... Uh, there is no context in the ad. Just a woman getting strangled. The fact that no one flagged this is offensive, frankly stupid. The genius behind this, and I use the term lightly, needed to take a long, hard look at the mirror and see how they are contributing to society. Imagine if, now this is where I, this is me getting a little angry, just saying. Imagine if this were a black man uh, being strangled by a white man, or oh. a gay man be strangled by a hetero. The ad cry would be enormous. So let's write. Uh, so let's uh, write this wrong, 20th Century Fox. Since you can't manage to put any women directors on your slate for the next two years, how about at least replacing your ad? So before you go uh, there's, on, there's there's the agenda. Agenda. That's there's the agenda. The agenda. <laughs> that's the agenda. But before you go on, before you go on, um. Rose McGowan, how would I know the difference between a hetero man strangling a gay man? 
All, all I gotta say is, I, I, tell we me need that. to stop with these depictions of purple on blue violence. It's really upsetting to I me. I got a blurry that, picture of it, but I'll share it. That here. that we Can't we continue to uphold these color stereotypes where purple people are more aggressive and violent than blue people. And I know Skeeter not... Valentine was mad chill. He was best friends with Doug. Yeah. So <laughs> so this 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 is the. <laughs> This but is I, the... Warren, I was actually... I was not prepared for that rejoinder. Well done. <laughs> Sorry. So this is, yeah. the, this is the billboard ad that she called into Quest, because there are many of these uh, around, around the country, um, in the U.S. here. And this is the one called the question. Now, granted, first of all, this is a fictional um, property, comic book, Related. And uh, isn't this literally the line from the movie, like in this scene? Yeah, it is a yeah. line from the movie. You have a character that, so somebody actually, you know, message boards that went around, somebody actually said, so what, Mystique should have just changed into a white guy, and, you know, and he should have been choking no, no, no. Here's, a white guy. Here's, here's the biggest problem like I have with this supposition, with this, this uh, the way that this has been phrased. There is plenty of context if you are a fan of this property. Yeah. You have all of the context you need. You understand these characters. We've been existing with these these characters, these movie oh, quite characters, a long time. for quite a while now. And I'm not even saying for people that have read all the comic books. I mean, movie <laughs> all the X-Men movies. <laughs> understand what's at stake in this moment, and it's a visceral image from the film. Yeah. It also, I think, diminishes... Um, the notion of a character like Mystique who would fight a character as powerful as Apocalypse if we somehow can't show that she was brave enough to stand up against a character like this. We, we take away her agency if, if we... It, it's, it's, you know, again, I understand the point of, like, well, he's choking a woman, but she's not any woman. She's a very powerful character in this cinema universe, and we take away her agency if somehow we're not allowed to show that she fights just as hard as anyone else and she's going up against a much stronger opponent. Mm -hmm. you know, that she's doing this in, in uh, auspiciously in a noble effort to try and, and fight for the right side of, of this equation. So, again, this is where I get really frustrated with communities coming in from the outside to police content. It would be like me going out and setting up protests at bookstores for more realistic depictions of masculinity in women's romance novels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not all Christian Grey. Right? So, so, <laughs> Christian Grey is not a real guy. So No matter what this, movie you put him in. Uh, so, yeah, why, this, why? That is, that is, that is perfect. <laughs> but, 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 but can't we have a grown-up conversation where we can all acknowledge that that's not content for me? Yeah. It's not. I am not the audience for that content. And, and for every Fifty Shades of Grey movie poster out there, what we can do is we can have a very grown-up conversation about the depiction of the BDSM community in a property which doesn't uh, value consent. You know, Fifty Shades of Grey does not value consent, and that's a major part of the BDSM sort of lifestyle. So you can have a grown-up conversation about that, but at the end of the day, it's not for me. That's not mine. So for me to come in from the outside and say, well, I think you need to make him 20 pounds heavier and not rich and uh, give him a receding hairline because that's like more, more realistic men, yeah. um, that, that's, that, that, I, that shouldn't matter. I should be mocked for that. It goes for video games. It goes for movies. We need to stop acting like every single piece of media needs to be sanitized for everybody because it doesn't happen in the reverse, and it shouldn't. So when we say, you know, like, this is a movie poster designed to create a visceral reaction for fans of the X-Men cinema universe, for someone else to come in from the outside and say, oh, well, what this really is is misogyny is disingenuous at best and opportunistic at worst. And, yeah, and, 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 and it affects the real misogyny that's going on, you know, distracting right. Right? a movie that yeah, well, she had an agenda to begin with. And what annoys, what annoys me is Fox apologized for this, and they shouldn't have. They should, have, they, should have, they should have kind of stuck to their guns and said, hey, this is a movie, this is what's going on in here, this is why this, 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 this exists in here. And it's surprisingly that she's saying this now, the timing of the movie, when this scene has been out for at least, like, God, it's got to be six, six months. months. Six, six months. months. Plus, it's yeah. got to be. This was like one of the first scenes saw in the trailer. It's been out for the longest time. So all of a sudden today, or whatever day she decided to say this, now she has a problem with it. 
and then puts in that slight comment when you don't have any female directors on your on your schedule. Hmm. I wonder if somebody didn't get the directing job that they were looking for. Well, wonder, well, wonder well, so I, I, I do believe that that's a, a very important conversation. It is, but it's the worst to place, place to place it in. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, you don't have that conversation when you're complaining about two fantasy characters yeah, it's, engaged it's in combat on a billboard. You have that conversation, and someone like Rose McGowan has the resources to engage with that side of the conversation. Yeah. I know that she's been a producer on properties in the past. Mm -hmm. So... If, if that's part of the conversation, great. Have that conversation because I think it's a very valuable viewpoint that a lot of media companies miss out on, video game companies and movie companies alike. But to try and, and, and hide it or, or use it as like a, you know, like a little uh, hidden nugget of something within the greater context of talking about a movie that's already been produced and is out, again, disingenuous at best, opportunity. And, and, it, and then, she, then she used that text message, which I don't believe was a real text message at all whatsoever, in which she was, she, she was trying to add that uh, somebody at center or a kid at center saying something about that. And you had a few other people complaining. On no, no, no. Okay, look, it, 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 let's, like... let's, let's, let's get this thing straight. That's the, the worst part about this is that um, this movie is about central character is a female protagonist. Mystique who is not a protagonist in the comic books that we know and read. She's a bad guy. And That's spoiler, not she was a bad guy. I'm, I'm going to just say spoiler. I'm not going to, I'm still not, I'm trying not going to spoil it, but spoiler, there are a lot of women come into play at the end defeating the bad guy. Let's just call it that. So, you know, the way she, the way she, she made this statement makes it feel like, you know, um, uh, Fox and Brian Singer, uh, all of them who made this movie, had an agenda to put things in a certain light. Considering that X Men, if I think about it, has a history of actually making most of their female characters pretty strong for the most part. I don't. Think all of them. Are. I mean, all Jean I mean, Grey, Jean Grey, Storm. I can't think of Emma any Fox. of them that you know. Mystique. Shadow oh my Cat, god! All of them. Like, oh, I can't and, and the of... Storm Wakanda storylines are always amazing. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean, she, you know, she married um, Black Panther. You know, yeah. I mean, it, it's. I'm not just saying in, in the movies themselves. I'm like, they've never. I can't think of any character they put in a serious female character they put in a serious bad light. They've mostly been on par with the guys. They've been in the battle. They've been better, in the fight. Better. Well, and, and but I, don't, I mean, comic books have a rich oh, that's history. Just, just look at the DC animated that. universe yeah, with yeah, Wonder Woman. You know, would we get upset about, you know, uh, Darkseid trying to choke out Wonder Woman? No, because no. we see a character who is one of the most powerful in the Legion of Superheroes going toe-to-toe -to -toe against one of the darkest forces in the universe. That should be heralded. I mean, it's, it, it, it's funny you mentioned that because I was going to say, it's like, nah, this is this going to put WB in check now? Because, you know, Wonder Woman's coming out next year. You have, the main villain for that is rumored to be Ares, which you know, is the God of War. Okay. And, um... And you know, are we gonna see are we gonna see Aries out of the posters just because they don't want to have any kind of you know? Probably so, because yeah. now because companies I'd, I'd rather because, cave be, in than because, because even even, even Wonder Woman like went through the the whole process of um you know when they they had like a very general wide photo somebody took far away from the set and you know, everybody was like oh it's just all uh, white women on set. You know, um, you know, uh, and, and then you now see just like you now the see, offices of the Hunting Huffington. Yeah, and, yeah, and then you now see another photo where there are a lot of you know they had a, a lot of mixed you know mixed mixed races of people in there, and then finally you know we hear that uh, what's her name the the lady in Civil War that told um, what's her name told uh, Black Widow that she should move or she will be moved. Um, yeah. Is in the movie too, so everybody's like, "Oh, this is a mix now of, of people," and I'm going, "Let's not let's not try and overdo things here." You know, um, this thing, these these kind of changes will take a while. You know, it's how Hollywood is. We know that it's a process, and I agree. We want to see changes in there, but we can't start, you know, squeezing properties. But, but also, right. again, I want to come back to this notion of 
uh, of audience, that the audience gets what's happening in this moment. And yeah. The audience for these properties understands that if we're going to have better depictions of female superheroes, that also means we're going to have visual depictions of women in violent situations. And what we don't want are more damsels in distress. What we want oh, yeah. are strong female characters that rise to the occasion and, and try to do what's right, or or interesting villain characters who have agency for why they're they're bad guys. Like, for example, I, I think one of the weakest, because uh, we were talking about all these really, really great, strong uh, characters, I think maybe one of the weakest examples would be something like what, uh, what they did with Emma Frost, you know? Where uh, she's basically just sort of a sidekick who isn't a very effective telepath. Oh, I mean in the comics or... No, 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 not in the comics. In the comics, Emma Frost... Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I was like... I mean in um, First Class. In X Men First Class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that to me, I think was uh was something that we really could have um I don't want to use a word like skewered, but we could have criticized. I, I think yeah. they did a disservice to that character, and you can't tell if it was the writers or the director or if uh, January Jones just wasn't a compelling enough actress to bring more to that role. Um, that to me would be like okay, well there was a missed opportunity, but we took Mystique who was just sort of a an off the shelf shapeshifter character and imbued her with some really noble traits in the film in 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 this Fox Cinema universe. And so now we want to see her engaged in more complex storylines. And that means she's going to be facing bad guys, not just slinking off into the shadows as one of Magneto's henchmen. Blah. You know, that's yeah. not interesting. <laughs> we want to see something we want to see something more interesting to that. And if that means that she's going to be the character is going to be placed in more violent situations or in more violent contexts, that is the world of the X Men. It is it is a loose well, uh, allegory for racism and prejudice and terrible. Real life. Yeah. And they, now a white woman is coming to her rescue that she was she was depicted as being you know, involved in something violent in the middle of a on a film. Uh, seriously, would they rather have her written how Mystique really is? <laughs> would they rather have that? Well, but that's just it. Like, that's, they, they that's, a, that's that's a that's that's a lot worse of a stereotype going now. Yeah, but that's also like they wouldn't rather anything because they don't know. What the situation is? They don't know. Get out of my comic book movies. They're coming in from the outside to say you're wrong for enjoying this property because charmed. we have feels about what we think is right. Go back, See, the, go back to Charmed. No, it's not even that. The, the <laughs> thing, the, the thing I have noticed in in media where there's been a weird overcompensation. It's like because you want to make strong female characters, right? You have to make male characters look weaker. So then it's like female empowerment. And you know, my mindset is like, look, you can have strong characters. I always I always go back to Battlestar Galactica of saying that is yeah. a show you can look at. Even the the characters that you may think are weak have, have, have a, a personal strength, right, right, right. Exact personal strength or, uh, or, or moments of strength across the board, you know, and there's so many characters I'm going, that's, that's the reason I love that show because I couldn't see a character I went like, oh, this is weak, because at first you're like, ah, oh, this character is a little, and then you see why and where and where they're going to. And, you know, I, I would love to see more stuff like that in there rather than you having one sideways or the other. Well, I think it boils down to it's not so much strength or power or things being shown. It's in the end of the day, uh, a character, a character's value. What's their value in the property? And if they show a, a strong value versus being a, a, a sidekick or just a, a or just a or just something off, cute to look at, look yeah. at is a different thing. If a character has a value, I, I think it really doesn't matter whether they're good or bad or wherever strength or power they show, as long as there's a value within the story that you're telling will uh, it, it, it is, I think, what matters most in anything else and will convey to the audience better well, than anything else. I, I, I just find this situation to be very anti-feminist in that here we have Rose McGowan complaining about a violent image involving a woman with no, in claiming that there's no context when those of us who are fans of this property understand the context. So what is her point? That we should never see strong female characters engaged in violent conflict to the same degree that men are? I'm pretty sure I she would I don't understand how people don't see that that actually removes agency from female yeah. characters in these films. 
that it removes the that that it weakens the the progress that we've made in depicting them as as powerful as the male characters they're facing off against. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, to your point about Battlestar Galactica, we have that is a world where there aren't really superpowers to the same degree. Yeah. So humans have sort of certain limitations. Starbuck is an amazing pilot, and she was a great boxer. But, you know, uh, the guy who has 150 pounds on her would probably still win that fight. Yeah. Um, Wonder Woman needs to be depicted in a much different way. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder Woman needs to be depicted in a way where, um, oh, you know, oh, Superman is going to have some problems. <laughs> well, well, according to... Uh... According to B versus S, she's a little bloodthirsty, apparently. Well, <laughs> I, want, I wonder how no, she has. I, she always I know, has. I know, bad, but no. But, but that's not how it was ever depicted on the TV show, though. No, no, no. So I wonder how people that was, are going to yeah. accept that. Yeah, so that, that's, that's one of the things that I thought they got right because I think there are so many comics fans like us who have fond memories of like the Linda Carter TV yeah. show. I, I still love the old Wonder Woman TV show, but after so watching, now. after watching and reading New Frontier, that's the Wonder Woman story that I want. I want the Wonder Woman who's going to go into rural China and arm women against, you know, uh, horrible warlord men. To, to have all these civil uprisings. That's the Wonder Woman I want to see depicted. Yeah. Not only powerful in that she can fight, but also smart, because she's engaged in this political conflict as well as the armed conflict. conflict yeah. that, that, to me, is a fascinating storyline. All the rest of the New Frontier stuff, great. I kind of just want that one little chunk of Wonder Woman to be its own property, to be its own movie. And so, again, one of the reasons why this billboard is effective is because we understand this character, we know what her limitations are, and we know what she's up against, and she's still there. She's still in this moment. She's still fighting something that she can't beat on her own. Oh, yeah, exactly. And, and that's why it creates a visceral response. Mystique has become a fan-favorite character through the two actresses that have portrayed her. So, to, again, to come from the outside, I keep liking it to, we can't police other people's fantasy. If that's pornography, if that's romance novels, if that's video games, if that's daytime talk TV, it should not be on me to say what is acceptable for someone else to consume, and no one else should be able to tell me what is right for me to consume. And so comic books are the zeitgeist right now. They're hot, they're big, they're visible, they're the tentpole films from all of these companies, which means that we're exposing people to ideas and concepts that they're not familiar with. But the reaction to that should not be, I'm not familiar with this and it looks bad, so you can't have it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it, it, it's like that, that quote that's, con that's continuously uh, misquoted as being, um, uh, I can't remember the author now, but you know, it, it's like saying none of us should be able to have steak because babies can't chew. Can't chew, yeah. Um, Hanko Martin says, it's a fictional movie, and he's just massaging Mystique's tense neck, if you look at it on the positive I side. I mean, all that shape-shifting has got to take a lot out of you. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's just, it's just, it's, it's disappointing that in the end of the day, that was all agenda based, and she tried to make it seem like it wasn't, and it's like, nope, seeing right through it, and uh, no, I mean, well, the, the, and what's disappointing are the number of people that will be influenced by it, because yeah, we want to have. Will be. We want to have real conversations. The point she brings up about more female producers and more female directors exactly. is absolutely a vital conversation we need to be having in content production right now. But you're never going to get there if most of the people that are now exposed to that idea are shaking their heads because you made some bullshit hissy fit out of an X-Men yeah. movie billboard. Be because right now in in uh, in Hollywood is, you know, you only you only have female director directing uh, female superhero because superhero is a big thing, right? So we have a female director on Wonder Woman. They're looking for a female director for Miss Marvel. And then same thing, you only have a black director directing a black superhero, which is why I was telling you, Warren, I was like, I am very happy it was him for Flash and not anything else because you yeah. cannot keep doing that same, oh, black guy, direct black superhero, woman, direct woman superhero. And, and it totally mm. misses what's yeah. interesting about bringing a different perspective to a movie. I, I, every single time like I see that where, oh, well, we need a female director to direct Wonder Woman, I look at a movie like The Hurt Locker directed by Catherine Bigelow. Yeah. This is a brutal, on-the-rails, sort of Catch-22 style, just psychological mindfuck of an action film. And you're like, that's the person that I want directing the next Superman film or the next Batman movie. That's, that's the feel of this world that they've created. And I yeah, think yeah. a Catherine Bigelow would do a way better job 
than a Zack Snyder <laughs> fully realizing what the stakes are for these characters. And and we can't have that conversation because we're worried about purple people hurting blue people on movie billboards. It's silly, man. Silly. All right, that is pretty much it um, for the show this week. Um, and this time we move on to that segment where we talk about what we have on the channel and what we can expect next week. So starting off with you, Mr. Juan Bagnell, what can we expect? Uh, what do you, did you have on uh, some gadget guy as well as Pocket Now? What can we well, expect? I, actually, um, unfortunately, for once, I'm going to have to say stuff because I'm on wow. I'm, I'm under NDA next week for a couple of products that are going to be out on Pocket Now, and that's going to be taking up all my time. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do the follow-up videos that I wanted to do for Gadget Guy just because I'm kind of on a on a deadline. Well, I mean, you got us all excited now, NDA. I mean, yeah, I mean, we're under embargo, so uh, I should be some cool stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> He's um, like, yeah, yeah, but I can't really say much more than that. So. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. How about you, Mr. Warren Bowman? Stuff and stuff I can't talk about. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. What is your so what is Board of Work having coming yeah. next? Week? Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's yeah, talk I know. About that. So currently, guys, we have a giveaway going on, so definitely enter that. You can win an AMD uh, system. I'm, I'm doing it with a bunch of YouTubers, including Mr. Warren Bowman here, who's just said stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's Even free stuff. That that's that's there. Uh, we finished our test drive of the Honda Civic Touring, so that uh, is up. You can check that out. Um, and next week, um, we have a couple of things: uh, some gaming uh, headsets, which you can see there. If you can read it, you know what it is. If you can't, well, I'm not telling you till you see it. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, just a bunch of gaming stuff next week, uh, pretty much on our, on the channel. And yeah, that's it. So thank you very much, guys. Since everybody has said stuff and mostly stuff, <laughs> um, don't forget to subscribe to all the channels: vw1.com, uh, Border Work, uh, Some Gadget Guy, as well as Pocket Now. Um, if you want to follow uh, Mr. Warren Bagnell, you can catch him on Twitter. That is his handle: Some Gadget Guy. Um, and also, you can check out his videos on Some Gadget Guy as well as Pocket Now. And then Mr. Warren Bowman. That is, of course, his channel, bw1.com. Also on Twitter, that is his Twitter handle. Follow him there. Check out his videos and stuff. And um, for me, right here, that's it. It's Thunder E, Board at Work, No Lower Third. You can read that. And uh, thank you very much. And always enjoy your entertainment.